Hey, folks, welcome to Market Technical Analysis by InTheMoneyStocks.com, your leaders in pure technical analysis, avoiding all that Wall Street hype. This video for Friday, June 3rd, 2011, is sponsored by Realtick. All right, guys, let's get started here. As we talk about the markets, you can clearly see the markets are lower today on the day, although we are sharply off the lows. The markets had a ginormous gap down today with the spiders coming down to the even number of 130. Remember, the SPY is an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Now, again, that 130 level being support, the markets caught a massive bid. They floated this thing up almost back to the flat line. We actually were not that far away from going back to the flat line when this market, again, had a little bit of a pullback. This pullback could actually be just a consolidation pattern before another move up, and it almost looks like it's starting here as we speak. You can see a little bit of green starting to go, maybe a little bit more of a float back to the 20 moving average. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 75 points right now. NASDAQ is down 21. S&P 500 is down about 9. That's basically 6 tenths to 7 tenths of 1%. It's not that big of a fall. Uh, many people this morning after we got that non-farm payrolls number coming in at 54,000 were shocked. The futures dumped out. We were down huge on the day, but the markets again have recovered. Why have they recovered? Well, partially because this was already built in. And I talked about this to my Research Center subscribers, folks. And if you want to be a Research Center subscriber, you can take a free trial by going to inthemoneystocks.com and just clicking on any of the free trial banners and just taking the free trial. You can also take a free trial to the intraday stock chat. It is a one-week free trial. But in any case, we talked about this, how the ADP jobs number on Wednesday that was released, which caused us to have that basically one of the largest down days in the last year on Wednesday, we're basically factoring in a bad number on Friday. You know, we got a 30,000 plus number on, I think it was 38,000 on Wednesday for private sector employment. If you didn't think that the number on Friday was going to be bad because of that number, you must have been smoking something that we won't even go into right now. Obviously, the number was going to be bad. So yes, initially people freaked out, but I think the market is coming back off the lows partially due to the fact that, all right, you know, it's a bad number. It's not a good number, uh, but at the same time, it's not negative you know with the ADP number on one on Wednesday it could have been a negative number today it was not a negative number so I think the markets yeah they're selling a little bit here but we're not seeing a massive collapse like we could have seen and a lot of people expected and again we talked about that last night in the research center nightly video also the dollar guys the dollar is lower today as the dollar sinks here you can clearly see that is helping the market remember the dollar goes inverse to the market so if the dollar is moving up the markets will go down if the dollar is moving down which it is today that it'll help support the markets. So obviously you have the bad news out there, but with the dollar falling, it's propping the markets up just a little bit. All right, and that's another reason why the markets are not down that much. Now, having said that, folks, we'll go back to the spiders on an intraday basis, and I want to just touch base with a couple different things. Yesterday, I called a bottom on the financial stocks. Why? Well, the financial stocks to me, and we'll put up Goldman Sachs' chart today, which is, by the way, just soaring. Um, yesterday, Goldman Sachs was indicted, or not indicted, excuse me, they were subpoenaed, by a New York prosecutor in basically the, the shady activities that occurred during the financial system. Well, that caused the stock to dump out all the way down to the 131 level. That was a massive support level. In addition, if we go to the daily chart, and you, I can draw this line in, and you guys can see this level right down here. Look at this. See the pivot low from yesterday right there? And look at the reversal today. So when that happened, my, my hypothesis and my thesis statement was essentially saying, listen, they've had a lot of bad news, a lot of new regulations. Profits are down because they can't do as much as they used to do. And now finally you get this indictment that's out in the open. There's really nothing left. All the bad news is already out there. People are expecting the worst. So what's, the, what's after the worst? Well, it can't be as bad as the worst. So therefore, it's better news. And sure enough, Goldman Sachs has reversed off of that low the 131 level and now it's all the way back to 137 and this is the daily chart here you can clearly see a nice bounce back now if we go to JP Morgan same thing JP Morgan is up today and again if you go on the blog to yesterday's post on the rant and rave blog which by the way are free articles I put out I called the bottom on the financials I wrote an article specifically saying the bottom is in all right, Wells Fargo, which, by the way, I bought Wells Fargo with my Research Center members and Intraday Stock Chat members yesterday. Uh, what did I buy it at? Let's take a look. See the pivot low right here? This was an obvious no-brainer, and look at that. Yesterday's low, it triggered at $26.45. Nailed it, folks, and it's, it's basically flat today with the down market. With the market down today, uh, Wells Fargo's flat. I'm in the money already from the move off of that level yesterday. First target's going to be somewhere in this upper range here, probably around 28 bucks or so. Uh, and then second target, I think ultimately it goes back here on the Wells Fargo. This is probably second target right around, uh, I guess that would be around 29. In any case, the point is, 
if you know the charts, if you can read the charts, you can start playing and knowing where the bottoms on stocks are, the bottoms on sectors are, where the bottom on the market is going to be, or the top on the market. Uh, if you guys recall, for those of you that have been watching my videos, if you have not, um, and you do not you know, watch these free videos, and this is the maybe one of the first videos you're seeing, I called the exact high on the spiders here on the markets. Back, this was, a, I believe it was a Monday gap up. A Monday gap up, and I called the exact high on the markets here, and I said, guys, this is the high on the markets. We're going down from here. Well, look at the results. I mean, from basically 137.10, which was a, a level that I gave out two weeks in advance. I said, the markets are going here, and there's going to be a two, a, basically two weeks ahead of time. I said, that's your top, and the markets will fall from there. Sure enough, look at that. Amazing, folks. Absolutely astounding. In any case, that's what's been going on here. And again, you can take the free trial of the Research Center by just going to InTheMoneyStocks.com, clicking on any of the free trial banners. You can even take the chat room if you want to be in the chat room and ask questions and listen to our commentary. And as we call out day trades and talk about swing trades, you can always come in the chat and get a free uh, one week to the chat as well. Totally up to you guys. All right, let's go to a couple of the charts here. What else is going on? Let's take a look at the GLD. This is gold today. The GLD is off the highs, but it's still positive, which makes sense as the dollar, again, is lower today. Then that's going to have a little bit of upward pressure on gold. Silver, on the other hand, is down today. Silver is also an industrial metal, and I think that's why you're seeing silver down today, folks. Um, not only is it a store of safety, but it's also industrial. They use it in the production of, of batteries and, and cars and stuff like that. Um, and therefore, if less people are working if less people are getting jobs there's going to be less demand in the industrial venue for you know silver and silver is dropping today so silver getting a nice little pullback today uh, the USO oil is also down which why is oil down today even with the dollar down slightly the answer is obvious because just like I said with silver it's an industrial issue when there is a possible slowing in the economy when the economy is looking slower than we thought it was going to be people are going to consume less oil because people don't have to drive to work as much there are not as many jobs created so people aren't driving to work people don't have as much money if they don't have as many jobs to go on vacations to drive around to go to the beach and so forth so therefore, uh, oil is down on the day, down 48 cents on the USO with a nice little pullback. So just to make sure you guys understand all the reasons behind moves in stocks, moves in commodities, and so forth. All right. Now, having said that, uh, let's just touch base on a couple key leaders in the markets. Apple Computer is down a little bit today. Not a huge drop there either, down $2.50, which is a $300 plus dollar stock. So down $2.50 is nothing. Uh, Amazon.com is down $2 as well. It's a little bit of a bigger move, but still not a big move on Amazon. Um, I would say the biggest movers and the biggest players that you want to pay attention to, J.P. Morgan, Chevron, and Exxon. J.P. Morgan uh, is obviously up on the day, $0.37 cents currently. Chevron, which is this chart, is actually down $0.39. Cents. But one thing I want to point out is you actually have an in-spirit of bullish consolidation pattern. This is bullish right now, folks. All right, This actually is telling me that later today this could make a little bit of a move up, and that's as long as it holds this low pivot. All right, So just a reminder here, folks. Let me just erase these lines so we can clear it up just a little bit. This is a bullish consolidation as long as you do not close below this line at 150, 100 spot 0.50. All right, so at $100.50, as long as you don't close a candle be below this, this has a possibility to go like that. If you close below this level, somewhere down here, then you actually could go all the way back to the double bottom on the charts. So we'll be watching very, very closely in the coming, you know, couple hours or so and see what plays out here on the Chevron chart. Exxon, let's take a look at Exxon as well. Yeah, Exxon has a nice little kind of bullish, it's a little uglier of a bullish consolidation pattern, but it's getting a little uptick as well. And again, my, my hypothesis is, folks, for the most part, I think the markets are going to kind of stay in um, the slightly down mode and even have a possibility of moving up. I'd be a little surprised if we really sold off and closed at the lows of the day today. Uh, volume is dying out in a Friday afternoon here. We've had good volume this morning, but the volume, again, is dying out as we speak. Light volume is always a bias towards the neutral to upside. All right, so if the lighter the volume gets, more likely the Fed can come in and prop the markets up. And I swear, guys, this morning when the markets gapped down, it almost looked like the Fed was there. They propped this thing right back up. They didn't want to have a collapse on a Friday here going into a weekend. And it was very, very kind of a controlled buy program hitting the markets up, up, and away. And, uh, you know, we'll see if that continues later today or not. But that's what it definitely looked at looked like. All right, so we'll watch that and see how it all continues. But nonetheless, good stuff today, folks. Good stuff next week. Look for more bullish trades. We've been basically batting 100%, folks. I only honestly, in my swing trading career for my, my members in the research center in the chat room, 
I'm basically a 90% trader, 90% winners, which is higher than anyone else out there. Over Of late, over the last month or so in the research center, it's basically been batting 100%. I don't think we've had a loser in the last three or four weeks in the research center, probably in about 15 trades or so. So, I mean, just to give you a sense, you want to join that research center, you get, get these swing trades. If you're someone who wants to take control of your investments and really look to see how you can master the markets, buying something and holding it for one week or five days or three days or ten days, this is what we do, folks. We look for the good gains. We look to play the short-term markets. You can make much, much more money in terms of that. All right. Again, free trial one week. Research Center Chat. Take care, guys. Enjoy your weekend.